because we're seeing the stock off just around 2% initially actually moved higher on the news. We're all trying to scratch our heads. So what's your initial takeaway from this? I think the fact that the guidance, well, not the guidance per se, but looking at the projected EBITDA kind of being in line with where we'd hope that it would be is kind of giving us a little bit of a lift that we needed. Because if we look at Warner Brothers Discovery, it's a three-pronged company dealing with three different issues, right? There is a theatrical business that is dealing with a slowdown um, return to theatrical, and we're considering 2022 compared to 2019. When we look at the cable business, there is a decline in the linear base, and there is a potential decline in the ad spend as we head into 2023. And especially, of course, if we look at the DTC side of things, where the operation cost versus the revenue side of that is really going to be an ongoing conversation over the next few years. Um, but I think a big part of what we see when we look at these earnings specifically is that $3.5 billion targeted for synergies. That means that we're going to see a lot more cuts coming um, both to the programming side and to the labor side. We're talking about a company that's already dealt with a billion cut in programming that's cut, uh, I think, about a thousand jobs, if not more. And so I think the fact that the company is trying to approach even more in synergy is, while a deeply unfortunate story across the board for both programming and labor, is the type of news that the street is looking for for a company that's trying to really rein in all of their spending and those expenses and that 50, I think, big $50 billion debt that's kind of sitting over their head. And Julia, you just listed several risks for this company, both macroeconomic risks and then business-specific risks as well. What do you think is the biggest challenge that Warner Brothers Discovery needs to tackle right now in this moment so that they don't lose those investors, that they can really uh, get, get on top of these problems as quickly as possible? It's a company that is trying to, it's a legacy company of yesteryear that is trying to be a future company of tomorrow, right? And so what does that mean? One, they have to get uh, those those operation costs under control and bring up the revenue and the profit side of DTC. They need to prove that this is a type of product that people are going to jump ship for, That, including that declining linear base. What they want to do is kind of bring that declining linear base over to the DTC product and prove that there is a profit to grow over the next several years. Whether or not that's going to happen is the question on top of everyone's mind. And especially as we're heading into a period of, of increased inflation, I mean, we're already there, but a potential big recession kind of hanging over our heads, you know, whether people want to pay for something like HBO Max when there are cheaper, you know, ad tier supply, ad tiers over at Netflix now is a big question. So if we look at HBO Max, one of the advantages that it has is according to our data, the demand for the films, looking at films across all major SVOD, it's actually the largest. It sits close to 20% of all demand for film sits on HBO Max. But demand for the platform itself has actually decreased in the last quarter, meaning that people are trying to find their entertainment elsewhere. And if that demand continues to fall away from HBO Max, even with hit shows like House of the Dragon, it really puts an, uh, a curb on how, how much that platform can grow. And if you're trying to tell your investors that we understand the, the, the gross profit, mar profit margins on linear are much stronger there on streaming, but we really believe this is our future, you have to be able to convince them that there's this is a product that's going to grow and grow the next several years. And right now, that is something that I think a lot of their investors and shareholders are not sure about. And Julia, we know the ad revenue story has been hanging over a lot of these streaming companies. Just how much exposure does Warner Brothers have to this? How much is this damaging some of their some of their Q3 earnings? I mean, Warner Brothers Discovery is a cable company first and foremost. Their business is ads. You know, I like to say that television is advertising and advertising is television. And although streaming seemed to curb that for a while because it was operating from a place of total monopolization under one company. There's now this factor of, well, every company that's trying to grow their streaming service and surpass that ceiling of maybe 90 to 100 million subscribers in the United States and Canada regions where the vast majority of their profits are coming from in terms of, when we look at that average revenue per user, it's the strongest in the United States and Canada. Um, when we look at Discovery Plus and HBO Max and all the other DTC platforms alongside cable and linear, that Discovery really relies on to make up the bulk of its business, it's the most volatile. Because if we look at Disney, Disney has a parks business. It has a, it has a, cr a cruise business. It has other businesses that it can take in from. If we look at something like, you know, a Google that has a YouTube, right? YouTube's an ad business, but there's a bunch of other businesses coming in from Google that even when advertising on YouTube is hit, there's advertising on search and there's other places that at Google can pull from. If we look at, again, a, a, a Comcast, right? I mean, they saw a huge decline in their linear customer base, but they have other means of, uh, including broadband, and although that's declining, it's still a very sound business. If we look at Warner Brothers Discovery, it is simply a cable and entertainment business. And so if the advertising really declines, that affects them more than some of their other competitors. 
Julia, real quickly here, when we think about media mergers, obviously Warner Brothers Discovery was one of the biggest from this year. Who do you think could be next? And is this going to be the norm moving forward, especially amid this competitive landscape? I think Sherry Redstone would like to offload Paramount as a whole uh, as fast as possible. I think that happens in the next couple of years. But I really do think, you know, the NBC Universal Warner Brothers Discovery, although both sides of the equation continuously say that they don't see that happening, that really does make a ton of sense. And what we're looking at from the consolidation side is you can't just scale to scale. That's not going to create a great product. But in order to compete with some of the Apples and Amazons of the world, you really do need to have a scalable product that appeals to different um, uh, taste clusters and different audio demographics. And when we look at the demand for Warner Brothers Discovery and NBC Universal content, as well as that audience overlap and white space opportunity, that seems like a pretty uh, sound decision if that were to happen. Para Analytics Director of Strategy, Julia Alexander, thanks so much for joining us to break down these results. And of course, thanks to our entertainment reporter, Ali Canal, as well.